Today I'm showing students how to create a frequency table in Excel. In this data set there are several variables. We'll select one, in this case general health, to create a frequency table for. First thing I'm going to do is copy this data and paste it into a new sheet. This isolates this variable from the rest. Now looking at these responses, I'm not sure how many different categories there are for this variable. To figure that out, we can use advanced filtering. So with the data selected, I'm going to click Data on the ribbon and find Advanced under Sort and Filter. When I click Advanced, a message pops up saying Excel can't figure out where your column label is. I'm not worried about that, so I'm just going to click OK. I could filter this list in place, leaving the category labels in column A. However, I want to use this list later to create the frequency table. So I'm going to copy the list to a different location. Excel has figured out how many different records there are in the column, so it has listed the first and last cells in the column as the list range. In copy to, I'm going to select C1 as where I'm going to copy the new list of category names. Finally, I'm going to select Unique Records Only. This will throw out any duplicates and leave me with one example for each category in the variable. When I click OK, I have now a list of all of the categories in general health. However, the list is not in any logical order. It's just in the order that it was found in the original list. So I need to decide on an order and then put the list in an order that makes sense. Before I do that though, I'm going to resize column C. Now looking at the responses here, it seems to me that a logical way to do this would be to start with the worst health and go to the best. Therefore, I'm going to start with poor, go to fair, good, very good, and then excellent. Finally, I'm going to put NA at the end because that's just for no answers. So I have the data selected. I'm going to click sort. Now, because general health is the name of the variable, I don't want to sort it with the rest of the data. So I'm going to click my data has headers. And instantly, the selection changes to just the category labels. And in the sort by, it lists general health as the sort by column instead of column C. Our order is not alphabetical, so I'm not going to choose either of the A to Z or Z to A. I'm going to create my own custom list. And looking in the custom lists, I don't see one that fits my data. So I'm just going to create my own. Starting with poor, then fair, then good, very good, and finally excellent. And then NA will always come last. To make sure I have this for later, I can click add to add it to the list of custom lists. When I click OK, I go back to the sort window and I see that in the order it has the list how I want it. If I wanted to reverse it, I always could. It's given me that option again, but I'm just going to stick with what I chose. When I click OK, now the list is sorted in an order that makes sense. What we have to do next is count how many of each category appear in the original list. First thing I'm going to do is create a header for the column called count. Now I'm going to use a formula in one cell and use this handle here to drag it down and create formulas for each of these cells to count how many of each one of these categories appear in the big list. So I'm going to click insert function. Now the function I'm looking for is called COUNTIF. It's found in statistical. How COUNTIF works is that it counts the number of cells within a range that meet the given condition, which means 
I need to give it a list of things to look at and one item to look for. When I click OK, in the range box, I want to select my original data. And just to be safe, I'm going to use dollar signs because when I use the handle on the selected cell, Excel will change the formula as I drag down or to the right. If I don't want things to change, I add a dollar sign in front of them. I just want to make sure that I always use the same data for every count. For the criteria, in this case, because I'm in the cell to the right of poor, I'm going to select poor. And because the categories are arranged in a column, I'm going to add a dollar sign in front of the column label for that cell. When I click OK, it counts up how many people said poor. Now I'm going to click and drag the handle all the way down and it counts up each category in the data. The last thing I need to do is add a total, so I'm going to add total at the end here, except it popped a zero in because it thinks I want to continue with the COUNTIF function. I really don't. I need a SUM here. So I'll delete that and add my own function called SUM. It's in math and trick. For SUM, we need to tell it which cells we want to add up. To make sure, I'm going to select all these, and this time I don't need any dollar signs. Now when I click OK, it adds up all of these to get 14,041. So I know I have the correct number of people because there are 14,041 entries in this column. Now you're ready to create a bar chart from your frequency table.